In the previous lesson, I showed you how to set up the local development environment on Windows. In this lesson, I'm going to show you how to set them up on Mac. If you're using Windows, you can skip this video and go to the next one. So, in this lesson, you're going to learn how to install Homebrew, install PHP, MySQL, Nginx, and DNS Mask, install Composer and Laravel Installer, install Valet, install Node.js, and install Visual Studio Code. Okay, first thing first, we need to install Homebrew. The Homebrew is a package manager for Mac or Linux. With Homebrew, you can install any software that you need much easier. To install it in your machine is very easy. Just go to brew.sh, then execute this command in your terminal. Notice that to make this command working properly, you'll need Ruby. Before Catalina, the Ruby language has been installed by default, so everything should be fine. But I read in the internet that in Catalina, the Ruby language is no longer available. I don't know exactly if it's true or not, but before you run this command, you can verify Ruby in your terminal and type ruby-v. Here in my machine, I have Ruby version 2.3.7. If you don't find the message like this, then you can googling how to install Ruby. Once you have Ruby installed on your machine, you can copy this command and paste in your terminal, then hit enter. And then, once the homebrew installed, you can then install the software that you need. Here in my machine, I already have PSB, MySQL, Nginx, and DNS mask installed. So here, I just want to show you how to use homebrew command to install the package. Here I have PSB version 7.4 installed. If you haven't installed it, or you may have it, but the version is below 7.2, then you can install it by saying brew install PSP. Hit return to actually install it on your machine. When it's finished, you can verify your PSP by running the previous command PSP does V. You can then install MySQL by saying brew install MySQL. The current version of MySQL is 8, but it has some issues. That's why here we're gonna use version 5.7. So here you need to specify the version 5.7, then hit enter. Once the installation finished, you can verify the MySQL by saying MySQL does V. Oops, it should be in capital. Okay, here I have MySQL version 5.7.28. Now, for installing Nginx and DNS mask, you can follow the similar way, brew install and specify the package name, or you can ignore them, because when you install Valet, Nginx and DNS mask will get installed automatically if they cannot be found on your system. Next, let's install Composer in our machine. To install it, let's navigate to getcomposer.org, then hit the download button. To go to download page, here let's select these commands, then copy it to clipboard. In here, just paste the code and hit enter. Wait for a second. Alright, the composer has been downloaded, and here it's stored in users, username, then composer.far. So to use it, we can say psp composer.far. PSP Composer.far. Here, I get a list of commands that Composer provide. But the Composer is accessible only here. For example, if I open new tab, then I'll go to desktop, then type PSP Composer.far. Here, it cannot be recognized. So, we need a way to make the Composer accessible in all places. To do that, let's go back to our browser, go to Getting Started. Here, let's hit this option, Installation Unix Linux Mac OS. So, let's copy this command. This command will move the Composer.far to USR local bin directory and change the name to Composer. Once it moved, here we can access the Composer globally, and we don't need to call PSP before the Composer. So let's copy the command, 
paste here and hit enter. Now if we type composer, here we get the same thing. If I go to other place, now composer is also accessible. But this is not enough because we need to kind of register the composer system wide vendor bin directory in our system in order to make composer working properly. So if we go to our browser, then go to installation. Here for macOS or Linux, we need to set the composer vendor bin directory to the system's path. Back to terminal. Here I'll close the second tab. So if we type echo dollar path, here we cannot find the composer vendor bin in the system's path. So to add that, there could be many different ways. If you're using bash, you can open with vim dot bash vim dot busrc or dot bus profile. Here, since I used the shell, I'll open with vim dot zshrc file. In this file, I can add the composer vendor bin. I hit I key in the keyboard to modify the file. Then here we can add this command: export path dollar home for slash dot composer vendor bin colon dollar path. Basically, this command prepend our composer vendor bin to the path variable. Here I can save the change by hitting escape key, then write colon wq, then hit enter. Now if I echo out the path variable, nothing change here. Maybe we need to open new shell, then echo out the path. Alright, now here we can find the users my name dot composer vendor bin. Another way that you can do is adding this dot composer vendor bin path inside etc path file. And here you can just add the path then set the change. Since I've added in dot zshrc file, so here I'll under the change. Alright, the next thing that we need to do is to install Laravel installer. With the Laravel installer, we can easily create our Laravel project by using this command, Laravel new project name. If you didn't install it, you can create a Laravel project using composer command. Composer create project dash dash properties Laravel Laravel and specify the project name. Okay, let's copy this command. Paste it here, then hit enter. This could take some time, so I'll come back when it's finished. Alright, the Laravel installer package has been installed successfully. Now, let's try to create new Laravel project. Laravel new blog. Hit enter. Okay, now all dependency packages that Laravel needed being downloaded. This process could be take a bit longer initially. But it will be much faster for later project creation because the dependencies will be taken from cache. Alright, we have created new Laravel project. Let's get to it. CD blog. Then we can fire up PSP within server by saying PSP artisan serve. Now the server is running. We can access this address in our browser. Alright. Here we have a lot of our welcome page. Here, this number is alias for the localhost. So if we change this to localhost, here we get the same thing. Alright, we've successfully installed Composer and a lot of installer. The next thing that we should do is to install Vale. Back to a lot of our official guide, then go to Vale. So to install Vale, here we've installed Homebrew, we've also installed PSP 7.4, 7.3 or 7.2 should be okay, 
We've also installed Composer. And now, here we can copy this command to install Valley in our system. Just copy. Here, I'll switch to other window. Paste, then hit enter. I'll come back when download finished. Alright, the Valet has been installed successfully. Now we can type Valet install, hit enter. Then, here I'll enter my password. So, if you see in this guide, the Valet install command will configure and install Valet and DNS mask and register Valet's daemon to launch when your system starts. Let's see. Oops, I get error. Let me see the engine X surface. Probably this error occurred because before I recording this video, I upgrade my PSB version from 7.3 to 7.4. Maybe I also need to upgrade the engine X. Alright, Nginx has been upgraded. Let's try again. Valet install. Oops, I made typo. Valet install. Alright, Valet installed successfully. Now we can verify the Valet by pinging any .test domain. Here we can see the domain responding on 127.0.0.1, which means Valet installed correctly. Let's hit Ctrl C to stop it. We've created a new Laravel project in here. I call it blog. Now, since I have Valet installed, I'll move this project into my special directory. So I've created a special directory to house all my Laravel project in workspace. Laravel. So I'll move the blog project into that directory. Here I can do that by saying mv blog tilde workspace Laravel. Oops, I get error directory not empty. Probably I've already have a project called blog in this directory. So here I'll move it and rename it to another one. Alright. Now I'll cd to that directory, workspace, Laravel. And now let's go back to the guide, then go to serving sites. Here we can run valet park. This command will register your current working directory as a path that the valet should search for sites. So valet park, then enter password. Alright, this directory has been added to file spots. So now we no longer need to run PSP or some serve to make Laravel accessible in our browser. Just go to the browser, then enter the projects folder, my blog .test. Okay, here we get the same thing. We don't need to go to our terminal and run our server. This is one of the benefits using Valet. We only need to place our local project inside Valet's path, then enter project folder name, followed by the taste in our browser. Just in case you want to change the domain suffix, not the taste, but to something else. Here you can run this command. Valet TLD and followed by the domain suffix. Alright, the next thing that you could do is to install Node.js. As I mentioned before that Node.js and NPM are needed if you want to make use of Laravel Mix in your project. Just download a package, whether LTS or non-LTS, then install it in your machine. And then the next thing that you could do is to install Visual Studio Code. Just hit download, then install it on your system. If you already have your favorite editor, then you can still using it. 
and you don't need to install the VS Code. But throughout this course, I'll be using this editor. And lastly, you can go to SQLPro.com This is the most popular MySQL database management tool for Mac. Just download this button to download a package, then install it on your machine. Alright, congratulations! You've successfully set up your local development environment on your Mac. And now, you're ready to write your Laravel code. If you're gonna use Visual Studio Code as your code editor, then you can move on to the next lesson where you'll see what extensions that you need to install and other stuff to make your editor more powerful and make coding much easier. But if not, you can skip the video and go to the next section.